Hi, everyone. So this is a pre-recorded session in which you can use the graphic organizer, which I'm about to share my screen of. Um, so you can use the graphic organizer to work through some non-Mendelian inheritance patterns with me. So I'm going to go through the lecture today and I'm going to teach you how to do each one and fill in the graphic organizer with you. All right, so let's hop right into it. When we talk about inheritance patterns, when we talk about inheritance patterns, we mean how our traits are going to show up based on how we get them from our parents. Right. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about the patterns of inheritance that Mendel couldn't necessarily um, explain and how we use Punnett squares to still determine the probability of our offspring from a parent cross. All right. So simple dominance is something that we learned about last Thursday. And in simple dominance, how are your traits inherited? Your traits are inherited where the dominant allele or the dominant trait always covers up the recessive. So in this kind of inheritance, the dominant trait always covers up the recessive trait. So what does that mean? Let's go through our legend for this example, and we're going to talk about what each genotype means and um, how to do this problem if we're talking about simple dominance. So it says gray fur is completely dominant to black fur. Show me the cross between a homozygous recessive mom and a heterozygote dad. So for our legend, let's say we're just gonna use G. So capital G, remember it denotes a dominant trait. Dominant traits are always denoted by capital letters. So capital G is going to express our dominant trait, which it says is gray fur. So capital G is for gray. Whereas lowercase g is for what color? Black. So first we've got to figure out our alleles. Then we've got to write out all the possible genotypes that could come from these two letters. So what does each genotype mean? Remember genotypes are your letters and a genotype consists of two letters because you get one allele from your mom and one allele from your dad. So the homozygous dominant genotype would cause these, this fur to be gray and we'll say they're puppies. So these puppies will be gray. A homozygous dominant genotype means that homo, same, dominant, capital letters, two same letters. Whereas a heterozygous genotype, hetero, meaning different, is two different letters. So a heterozygous genotype would make what kind of puppies? If we're talking about simple dominance, where the dominant trait always covers up the recessive trait. The dominant letter is always going to cover up the recessive letter. So what color would this puppy be? Gray, that is correct, because it has at least one capital letter. And if we have a homozygous recessive genotype, homo means same, and recessive means two lowercase letters, or recessive means a lowercase letter, two lowercase letters create a black puppy because they're shy and they can shine together in their shyness. And then the last thing we have to write is our parents' genotypes. 
So mom is homozygous recessive. So what would her genotype be? Homo, same, recessive, lowercase letters. So her genotype would be lowercase g, lowercase g. And the dad, his genotype, he's a heterozygote. Hetero means different. So there are two different letters to make up that genotype. So he must be capital G, lowercase g. All right, so now we have to do our Punnett square. And you put the first parent on the top and you put the second parent on the left. And to do your Punnett square, you bring your top parent down, bring their alleles down, and bring your left parent over. All right, but that's not enough just to do the Punnett square. What is the Punnett square actually telling us? Now we have to write out our genotypic and our phenotypic ratios so we can understand what is this Punnett square telling us. So your genotypic ratio is the comparison of letters. So your comparison of letters to letters. So our first genotype that we would look for is a homozygous dominant genotype, homo, same, dominant, capital letters. So the homozygous genotype, homozygous dominant genotype. How many of our offspring have, of these four, how many of our offspring have a homozygous genotype, homozygous dominant genotype? None. So we have zero homozygous dominant. How many of our four offspring have a heterozygous genotype? That's right, two. Two. And how many of our offspring, of our puppies, have a homozygous recessive genotype. That's right, two. That's not all. We know their genotypes, but what are their phenotypes? What is the phenotypic ratio? What we can actually see. So what we can see. Well, we can either see gray fur or black fur. So let's figure out what color these puppies are. How many puppies have gray fur? Two. How do we know? Because whenever there's a capital letter in simple dominance, it will always overpower the lowercase letter. If there is a dominant allele, it will always overpower the recessive allele. And how many black puppies do we have? Two. So simple dominance is the first kind of inheritance pattern that we learned. But Mendel couldn't explain all the patterns of inheritance, right? He used peas and peas are extremely simple organisms. Most of their traits are only controlled by one gene and each of those genes has two versions, two alleles. So either they're green or yellow. One gene for color, two alleles, green or yellow. They're either tall or short. One gene for height, 
do versions, tall or short. However, genetics is not actually a lot more, it's actually a lot more complicated than that. As humans, we're a lot more complicated than, complicated than people. So some traits aren't as simple to explain. If Mendel's laws were always correct, then a red carnation gets crossed with a white carnation and always gives you red carnations because red is dominant over white. But what happens when you cross a red carnation with a white carnation and get a pink carnation? So the first type of inheritance pattern that we're going to talk about that Mendel couldn't quite use pea plants to explain was incomplete dominance. In incomplete dominance, the dominant allele does not completely cover up the recessive allele. So the phenotype that is presented is a mixture of the dominant and recessive traits. So how are the traits inherited? The dominant and recessive traits cause a mix. Okay, so in incomplete dominance, the dominant allele does not completely overshadow the recessive allele. The capital letter does not completely overshadow the lowercase letter. They now cause a mix. So let's do this problem. In carnations, the red allele is incompletely dominant to the recessive allele for the white flower, for a white flower. Okay, please note that most of your questions will give you what kind of inheritance pattern you will be pattern you will be working with. Okay, so whenever you see incomplete dominance, think about a mix. So let's do our legend. What does each genotype mean? So capital R is the dominant color. I mean, it is the dominant allele and it codes for what color? Red. And lowercase r codes for the recessive color, which is what? White. Next. What do these genotypes mean? What are the possible genotypes and what do they mean? So we can either have a homozygous dominant genotype. We could either have a heterozygous genotype or we can have a homozygous recessive genotype. If I had a homozygous dominant genotype, what color would this flower be? Yes, red. And if I have a homozygous recessive genotype, what would the color of that flower be? White. But since we're talking about incomplete dominance, what would the color of this flower be? if it had a heterozygous genotype. If it causes a mixture, what is a mixture of red and white? Pink, good job. So heterozygous genotypes in incomplete dominance express mixtures. So now let's write our parents, flower one and flower two. Okay. 
So it says show the cross of a homozygous red flower and a heterozygote. So a homozygous red flower would be capital R, capital R. And a heterozygote, two different colors, I mean, two different letters would be capital R, lowercase, lowercase r. All right. Let's do a Punnett square. Put your first parent on the top and put your second parent on the left. All right, let's do our Punnett square. Bring the first parent down and bring the second parent over. That's not enough just to do the Punnett square. What do we have to do? We have to figure out what this Punnett square is telling us. So let's do our genotypic ratio. Remember, genotypic, genotypes are your letters. So we're comparing letters to letters. So out of our offspring, one, two, three, four, out of all of our offspring, how many homozygous dominant offspring do we have? Homo meaning same and dominant meaning capital letters. So how many of our flowers have two capital letters for their genotype? Two, that's right. How many of our flowers have a heterozygous genotype? Hetero meaning different. So two different letters, capital R, lowercase r. How many of our offspring flowers have a heterozygous genotype? Two, that's correct. Two heterozygotes. And how many of our flowers have a homozygous recessive genotype? Homo meaning same, recessive meaning lowercase letters. How many of our flowers have two lowercase letters for their genotype? Zero. There are no flowers with the heterozygous, heterozygous homozygous recessive genotype. Excuse me. We're not done. What do these genotypes mean? How are these flowers going to look? Because the phenotypic ratio is what we can see. So what are the three colors we're looking for? Let's go back to our legend right here. What are the three colors we're looking for? Red, pink, or white. So what color would our homozygous dominant flowers be? Red. Good job. Okay. What color would our heterozygous flowers be? Remember, this is incomplete dominance. And the dominant and recessive traits, the dominant and recessive alleles cause a mix. So what would the color of these flowers be? Exactly, pink. Because we're talking about incomplete dominance, the capital letter and the lowercase letter, the dominant and recessive alleles cause a mix. And so now red plus white makes pink. And we have zero white flowers. All right. So, here we go. The next kind of inheritance pattern we're going to talk about is co-dominance. So what is co-dominance? What does it mean to be co-dominant? 
when you're working with your co-worker, it's someone who's at work with you. They don't work for you. They don't work behind you. They work with you. So co-dominance is when neither allele is dominant. So they're expressed equally with each other. So a hybrid will show both traits equally. You can use two different capital letters to show each allele because they're expressed equally. They're both dominant. So you use two capital letters to show how both of them are dominant and both dominant colors will show, okay? We're going to do an example about a red and white cattle on the next slide. So a red bull and a white cow can mate and make, this is called a roan cow. So I was supposed to say road, roan cow, which is a spotted cow. Both the red and the white show up equally. So let's do a problem together. So in a co-dominance inheritance pattern, if it's express if it's inhib if it's excuse me expressing a co-dominant inheritance pattern, how are your traits inherited? Your traits are inherited where the dominant and recessive. alleles are expressed equally. It causes spots or stripes. Okay, and you always have to write two capital letters, okay? Because they're both dominant together. And if they're both dominant, they have to have two capital letters. Two different capital letters because they're both dominant traits. Okay, so let's do this activity together or this example together. It says certain breeds of cattle show co-dominance in coat color. In the problem, it's telling you what kind of inheritance pattern you're looking for. Okay, show the possible offspring when a roan cow, remember spotted, is a spotted cow, is mated with a roan bull, a spotted bull. So, Let's go ahead and write our alleles and what they mean. Okay, so capital, capital R codes for the dominant trait and the dominant trait is red. Okay, but capital W also codes for the dominant trait and the dominant trait is white. So first we write our two alleles. Please note, we are writing two capital letters because this is co-dominance where they show up together and equally. But we also have to have two different letters because both of them are dominant traits. So we have to have a dominant capital letter for one and a dominant capital letter for the other. Okay. Now, if we put both, if let's figure out what each of these genotypes would express. So I could have a capital R, capital R genotype. I could have a capital R, lower, I mean, capital W genotype. And I could have a capital W, capital W genotype. So if I had two capital R's, for my genotype, what would be the color of this cow or bull? 
red. If I had two capital W's, what would be the color of my bull or my cow? White. But be careful. When we're talking about a heterozygote of a capital R and a capital W, the dominant allele for red and the dominant allele for white, what would the color of that cow be? Remember, both of them are expressed equally. Both red and white are expressed equally. So what kind of cow or bull would I be seeing? Exactly red and white spotted. Or it's called roan. So red and white spotted is also called roan. Right here, roan. Okay. Because both of these traits are showing up equally whenever you have a heterozygous genotype that's going to express a spotted or striped organism. And the last thing we have to do for our legend, we have to write our parents' genotype so we can get ready for our Punnett square. So the cow, the cow's genotype, it says when a roan cow, so if it's roan, it must be capital R, capital W, and a is mated with a roan bull. Remember, roan means red and white spotted. So, capital R, capital W. Okay, so let's do our Punnett square. So we put parent one at the top. We put parent two on the left. All right, bring parent one down. And bring parent two over. But remember, it's not enough just to do the Punnett square. Now we have to figure out what these genotypic and phenotypic ratios are so we can figure out what we're looking at in this Punnett square. So your genotypic ratio means your comparison of letters to letters. So how many homozygous red cows do we have? Or how many homozygous dominantly red cows do we have? One. How many heterozygous cows do we have? How many heterozygous genotypes do we have? Two. One, two. And how many homozygous dominant white cows do we have? Just one. Now, I could have worded this a different way. If I would have asked you how many homozygous dominant genotypes do we have, what would you say? Homo means same, homozygous means same, dominant means two dominant alleles. So two same dominant alleles. How many homozygous dominant genotypes do I have? It would be two. Because capital R, capital R is a homozygous dominant genotype. But guess what? Since we're talking about co-dominance, white is considered dominant too. 
So capital W to capital W would also be considered a homozygous dominant genotype. Okay. And phenotypic ratio. So what we can see, what we can see. What are the three colors that we can expect? Right here. Red, red and white spotted or roan and white. So what are our babies? What are our little baby calves? How many red calves do you see? All right, one. One red. How many roan calves do you see? Red and white spotted. Two. And how many white cow white calves do we see? Just one. Okay. So here's another example. If there's a white chicken and a black rooster, they can make a speckled or spotted black and white chicken. Black and white are expressed equally. So your heterozygote with two different capital letters will show a spotted or striped outcome. Okay, so this was our example. So here's what I'd like to let you know. Incomplete dominance versus co-dominance. Incomplete dominance is when it causes a mixture. So what is the mixture of black and white? If you mix black and white, what color do you get? Gray. Whereas in co-dominance, they're expressed equally. So this gets expressed as spots or stripes. So you can see each color individually. So how do we see each color individually? As spots or stripes. Black is not blending into white. White is not blending into black. They're co-dominant. They show up together. An incomplete dominance, remember it causes a mixture. So what is a mixture of red and yellow? orange, but in co-dominance, you're going to see spots. In incomplete dominance, it causes a mixture. So if I see red and white, well, if I see red and white, that mixture is going to be what? A pink flower. But if I'm expressing co-dominance, red and white will cause there to be spots. So look at that, it's spotted. I think that spotted flowers are actually really beautiful. So don't get co-dominance and incomplete dominance mixed up. Incomplete dominance means it causes a mixture. It's incompletely dominant. I'm not completely overshadowing you. Whereas co-dominance, we're shining together like co-workers, we work together. Okay? So if your dominant color is red and your recessive color is white, in co-dominance, they cause spots. 
both colors show up together equally. But if they're incompletely dominant, they cause a mixture. So this wonderful pink flower is made. Okay. The next kind of inheritance pattern we're going to talk about is multiple alleles. So multiple alleles means there are multiple versions of one gene. So there's more than two versions of a gene that exist. For example, human blood types. Human blood types are an example of multiple alleles. There are three different versions, three different versions of this gene. You have allele A, allele B, and allele O. So here are some rules to remember about multiple alleles. To get type A blood, you can either have a homozygous dominant genotype, homodominant, or you can have a heterozygous genotype with a dominant and a recessive. It's the same for blood type B. You can either have a homozygous dominant to same dominant alleles or a heterozygous genotype, a dominant and a recessive allele. You can either have AB blood where it's a co-dominant expression. So A and B are co-dominant and they show up together. So your blood type is AB. Or you can have a homozygous recessive blood type where your two recessive alleles are expressed. Okay? So A and B are dominant to O. IO means O. That's O blood. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, you guys. Let me go back one. The allele for A looks like I superscript A, okay? The allele for B looks like I superscript B. And the allele for O can look like a lowercase i, or it could look like a i with an O. Okay, both of these mean O. This means B blood, and this means A blood. Okay. So when we're talking about blood types, if you see IA, that means A, allele A. If you see IB, this means allele B. And if you see a lowercase i or a capital I with an O, that means I blood, I mean O blood. Okay. So when we look at these genotypes, if you see capital A, cap I capital A, I capital A, that's blood type A. If I see I capital A, I O, or if I see I A I, that means still blood type A, all right? So A and B are dominant and O is recessive. If someone inherits a O, they will have type A blood because O is recessive. If someone inherits B O, they will still have B blood because B is dominant to O. A and B are dominant to O. But a person can only have blood type O if they inherited two O's. But A and B are co-dominant, which means that that person will have A B blood. So the person's a and B will show up equally. So, 
Let's do this problem together. So how are your traits inherited? So, A, undo, undo, the alleles, for A and B are dominant to O. But A and B are co-dominant to each other. I'm going to rewrite other. So let's do this problem and write out a legend. Okay, so a man with type AB blood marries a woman who is heterozygous for type B blood. What are the possible genotypes and phenotypes of their children? Okay, so a man, oh, so let's talk about what each genotype means. Let's do our legend. So, I, A, means what? A blood. I, B, means O blood, I mean B blood. Skipping myself. And I, O, or I, means O blood. Okay. Now we have to talk about what each one of these means. So if I have IA, and IA, or IA, and I'm going to put lowercase i, what kind of blood is that? If I have homozygous dominant A or heterozygous A, what kind of blood is that? A. If I have IB, IB, or IB, O blood, I have B blood. If I have IA, IB blood, I have AB blood, because remember A and B are co-dominant. And if I have O blood, if I have two lowercase i's, or I-O-I-O, -I, -O, I have O blood. Okay, the last thing we have to do is write our parents. So mom, dad. Okay, so it says a man with type AB blood. So what would he look like? We have I-A, I-B. Because A and B are co-dominant, and there's only one way to make AB blood. So it says the mom is heterozygous for type B blood. So what are the two types of B blood she could have? She could either have two alleles for B or an allele for B and an allele for I. And if it's heterozygous, meaning two different alleles, 
then her blood type must be IB. All right, let's go ahead and do our Punnett square. So we put parent one on the top and we put parent two on the side. Okay. Now, what I like to do with the Punnett square, I like to get rid of the, the I's, the uppercase I's, and all I put is the actual letters in the box. So um, go ahead and do your Punnett square. Bring the first parent alleles down. And bring the second parent alleles over. All right. So now we do our genotypic ratio, comparison of letters to letters. So how many homozygous dominant genotypes do we have? One, homo means same. Dominant means capital letters. It's just one. So there will be one, let me change the color, one capital B, capital B. How many Co-dominant genotypes do we have? One. A and B are co-dominant. They show up together. So one co-dominant genotype. How many heterozygous genotypes do we have? We have two. Two heterozygous genotypes. But since each one of them is different, we'll write their genotypes. It's one AI, one BI. You can also write them like this. You can also put the capital I's back if, if, if you feel comfortable. So you could say IB, IB. You could say IA, IB. You could say I A, I, and you could say I B, I. Okay. Now let's figure out what they're telling us. What can we actually see? What can we see? So, how many A bloods do we have? How many of our, how many of our offspring from this? Punnett square has A blood. One. So one A blood. How many of our offspring have B blood? Be careful. Mm, two. Two of our offspring have B blood. Even though one of them is homozygous dominant and the other is heterozygous, both of them still show B blood. Because remember, B is dominant to O. So there are two B bloods. How many O bloods do we have? Right, none, because O is recessive. The only way that you will have O blood is if you have two lowercase i's. So zero, zero O blood. And how many AB bloods do we have? Because remember, A and B are co-dominant. They show up together. Right. One, one AB blood.
All right. So there we go. There we go. Awesome. How are traits affected by sex chromosomes? Right? So we know that you have two types of chromosomes in your body. You have your autosomes. So those are your chromosome pairs one through 22. Chromosome pairs one through 22. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So we know you have 22 pairs of autosomes. Your autosomes control um, all life processes that aren't involving your sex chromosome. So what makes you a male or a female? They control all your processes. This 23rd chromosome pair, 23, controls your sex. So whether you're a, a male or a female. So if you have XX, you're a genetic female. Now XX does not look like two Xs. XX looks like two long pieces. An X chromosome is a long piece. This is a long X chromosome piece right here. That's an X chromosome. It doesn't look like an X. It's just a long, a large chromosome. And a genetic male has XY chromosomes. So your XY chromosome or your XY chromosome pair looks like a long looks like a long chromosome and a short chromosome. So This would be a Y chromosome, short. So if I asked you the sex of this person's karyotype, if I asked you the sex of this person, what would you say? Is this a male or a female? It is a male because there's an X long and a short Y. This is a male. Okay, so some traits that are passed on are sex linked, meaning they're caused by genes on your sex chromosomes. Okay, most sex linked traits are recessive. They're carried on the X chromosome and they're more common in males. Okay, so they're carried on that X chromosome. Females have two copies, so they need two copies to show that trait. Whereas a genetic male only has one copy, so they only have one copy to show that trait. Let me go back. So what that means is most Most genetic disorders are linked recessively. So it's caused by a recessive gene, but it's carried on the X chromosome, okay? So if you have the X chromosome, the gene is gonna be carried here, okay? And the reason why it's more common in males is because look at this, this is a female. And this, is a male. The Y chromosome does not carry any genetic information at all, except for making you a boy, if you're a boy. It doesn't carry something like the X does. So this spot right here, nothing goes there. There's only one place for the trait. So, 
if we're talking about colorblindness, if colorblindness is recessive, colorblindness is denoted by a lowercase a, right? For a woman to be colorblind, she has to have two copies, a lowercase a and a lowercase a. However, if she only has one copy and she has a capital A, then guess what? That capital A is going to overshadow that lowercase a. And that lowercase a pretty much won't even show up. She'll be carrying it. She'll be a carrier. She'll be carrying that trait, but she won't be affected because she's got that other dominant A. However, look at this. If a male has lowercase a, if that male has that color blindness, there's nothing on the Y. There's nothing. Nothing goes there. Nothing. The Y can't carry anything. The Y can't carry anything. Nothing. And so if he has that A for that recessive trait, it looks like he's going to express it because there's no way that he has any other trait to overshadow that recessive dream, that recessive gene recessive allele, okay? So let's do this one together. How are traits inherited in a sex-linked trait? In a sex-linked trait, traits on the X chromosome, get passed on, okay? So traits on the X chromosome, that's how they're inherited, a trait on the X chromosome, okay? So what does each genotype mean? Let's go through our legend. It says, show a cross between a colorblind man and a carrier mom, right? So let's use the letter H. Capital H means that it's dominant and it's normal. So the person is normal if they have a capital H because sex-linked traits are normally recessive. So if there is a lowercase h, what is that gonna code for? Color blindness. So color blind. Because sex-linked traits um, are typically recessive. And so because they're recessive, we know that when we see a recessive allele, it's going to code for that trait, okay? And if you see a dominant allele, then that means you're normal for most sex-linked traits, okay? Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. Let's talk about what possible genotypes may mean, okay? So let's talk about males and females. Um, a female is XX. And she also has traits on her X's. So if she has a capital H and a capital H, what will she be? She will be normal because she does not have any alleles for that recessive trait, okay? Then we have a female who has, who is heterozygous for the trait, okay? So she has a capital H on one of her X's and a lowercase h on the other. So what would she be? She would still, she would be considered normal because that capital H 
overshadows that lowercase recessive allele, but she would be a carrier. Why? Because she's carrying that gene and can potentially pass it on to her children. So she's a carrier for that. She's carrying that. Okay. And here's a woman that has two lowercase h's. So what would she be considered? She'd be considered colorblind or considered affected. She's affected with it. She's got two recessive alleles. She's expressing it. So now let's move on to the males. So the males can be X, Y. Right? But remember, nothing gets carried. Nothing. Nothing is carried. on the Y chromosome. Nothing. So, if I have a capital H on his X, what would he be considered? Normal. However, look at this. If he has a lowercase h, guess what? He's affected. He's colorblind. Okay. He has no choice but to be colorblind. He doesn't have a second H to, over, to mask over, all right? And the last thing we're gonna do is write our mom and dad. And we don't have space down here. So I'm gonna put it in the next box. So our mom's genotype, our mom, it says a colorblind, oh, excuse me, a colorblind man and a carrier mom. So let's start with man, our dad first. So dad. First of all, we know it's a man. So is he XX or XY? Right, he's XY. And it says that he's colorblind. So does he have a capital H or a lowercase h on his X? Good, a lowercase h. And it said mom is a carrier. So if she's a carrier, the first thing we have to do is figure out mom's sex. So she XX or XY? Good, she's XX. And it says she's a carrier, meaning she carries that gene, but she's not affected by it. So she's capital H, lowercase h. All right, so let's do our Punnett square. Now, our Punnett square, here's how I want you to do your Punnett square. So with our Punnett square, because we're talking about sex-linked traits, sex-linked traits have two parts. They have a sex, male or female, and they have the, um, the trait. So the first thing I want us to do is put mom on the top, put dad on the side. And then I want us to add our traits. So mom is a carrier. And dad is affected. All right, the next thing I would like us to do, go ahead and cross up your genders first. Don't do the traits just yet. Just do your genders first. Okay, so bring mom's X's down. Bring mom's X's down and then bring dad's um, X and Y's over. So X, X, Y, Y. So look, I crossed up the genders first. I didn't even do the traits yet because we're going to do the traits second. If you try to do it all at once, you're going to get confused. So I do my sexes first 
and then do my traits. All right, so now let's do our traits. So bring our H down, bring our H down, bring our H's down. Okay. Remember, I didn't put anything on the Y. I didn't put this H on the Y because Ys don't carry, the Y chromosome doesn't carry any traits. All right. And then I bring my H's over. There we go. All right. Oh. Now let's talk about our genotypic ratio, our letters. What do we see? So we have one. Carrier, female. We have one affected female. We have one we have one normal boy we have one affected boy, okay? So we have a one to one to one to one. Each one of their kids has the possibility of being differently affected, okay? So what can we actually, what can we actually see? What actually shows up? So we have one carrier female. She had the next possible daughter has two lowercase h's. So what is she going to be? Colorblind. So we have one colorblind female. Let's look at our males. We have one normal male. How do we know that? Because look at this, capital H means he's normal. And we had one colorblind male. Why? Because look, that H means that he's that lowercase h, that recessive gene means that he is colorblind, okay? So this carrier female, remember, is not affected. So the first female that we talked about, she's not affected. She just carries this nasty gene on her. But because she, not nasty, but she carries this colorblindness gene with her. But because she has that capital H, it overshadows and silences that lowercase h. Right? So here are some examples of sex-linked traits, hemophilia and colorblindness, okay? So when you're colorblind, you can't see what letter this is. In green dots, you can't even tell those are green dots and red dots. And hemophilia is when your blood doesn't clot like it's supposed to. So we've talked about traits that have been controlled by one gene, but there are some traits that are controlled by more than one gene right? These are called polygenic traits. If we break it down, poly means many. And genic or gene, genic means genes. So polygenic traits are controlled by many genes. Okay? So some examples of polygenic, polygenic traits are like human height, skin color, and eye color. 
Humans have a large range of skin colors or eye colors. And this is because so many genes cause those traits to be arranged in different complications. Excuse me, combinations. All right, I have gone through each one of these kinds of inheritance. Use the graphic organizer to complete each kind if you need to go back and watch the video. I'm so cool with that. All right, good night, everyone.